lasers, radio frequency, and ultrasound. These are all our skin tightening devices. And really hopefully this is going to help you guys understand the differences between them and then there's some confusion or some of these new devices that we recently had. So as Dr. Thurston was talking last week, really there's three different classes of devices that we're using to tighten the skin. Lasers. lasers have a specific wavelength and they target a specific chromophore. A fractional CO2 really is the gold standard um, in resurfacing lasers. I don't think there's anything better than this device aside from masking, but CO2 is really the best. It is fractionally ablative. Fractional is just It has a wavelength of 10,600 nanometers, which equates to be about 1.5 millimeters, the depth of penetration, and that'll come into play later on when I'm going to talk about the Ulcera. Water is its chromophore, and we use it to treat fine lines and wrinkles, pigment, scarring of any type, whether it be from surgery, acne, um, burn scars, treat any type of scarring. You only need one to two treatments. The Advantage with this laser, which is problematic for a lot of patients, is they don't want the downtime, which is about seven days of fractional CO2. If they're doing a max CO2, 10, 14 days, and then you have a period of prolonged redness that can last three months or so, and um, a lot of our patients they just don't like that. Just to picture fractionated technology, the pixelated holes, bridges, and impact skin, which aid in the recovery process. So we First we do the deep effect with the smaller diameter, but it penetrates deeper down for deeper lines and wrinkles and scarring. And then you go over it again with the active effect. Larger diameter, doesn't penetrate as deep, so it can combine what we call total effect to get the deep penetration plus a superficial treatment of pigment. So just a really um, long resisting treatment. This just shows the, the CO2 laser beam the area that we're ablating and then around that you get this dissipation of heat like a saucerization effect and this is what this heat zone is what accounts for the 30 percent contraction of tissue that you get with this laser that no other laser can produce this amount of heat and that's why this is such a great laser and this is really the most effective one and i think everybody understands the concept that whatever you put heat in this in the tissue that's what stimulates the production of new collagen so with our Fraxel, this is kind of a step down from the fractional CO2 as far as aggressiveness. It is non-ablative. Again, it's fractionated technology. It's an erbium laser. It is just depositing pixels of heat into the deeper layers of skin. It 
has a wavelength of 1,550 nanometers. Again, it has uh, water as its chroma core. I, I don't know why I put one on here. This should be like three to five treatments, really, if needed. And this is variable. If the patient has pretty good acne scarring, they, of course, would need more than that. But on average, you should say three to five treatments. Treat fine lines and wrinkles, acne scarring. can also treat pigmentation. Questionably, maybe melasma is a difficult one to treat. You only have about two days of social downtime. You have a little bit of swelling. It's just like you have a little bit of a burn, but really people can't go about their business. They don't have to have the downtime that they would with traditional or fractional PO2. And this is why a lot of people choose this one. Although you need more treatments, you don't have the downtime. showing that um, here's the pixelated beans and then you mingle with the CO2 to have that big saucerization effect of heat. With this one, you literally just get these little, what we call microdermal zones where the heat doesn't spread out as far. And again, this is just showing, like if this is, this is the epidermis and dermis, this is ablative resurfacing, so this would be the max effect, the whole area is removed. Fractionated CO2, you have these ridges that then cap skin. So this would be like active FX. This is non ablative fractional resurfacing. So this would be fractal, just heat, but the tissue is still there, it's not removed. And this would be like the deep, where we are removing that tissue. So those are our lasers that we use for. In resurfacing, but now with these newer technologies, the sublative is radio frequency, and it is again fractionated. All these devices are fractionated that I'm talking about today. Fractionated radio frequency, and it's delivered via 64 electrodes on an applicator tip, and that's what makes this different than our other radio fre frequency device. These electrodes really help drive the radio frequency deeper into the skin, because otherwise, radio frequency is just kind of it doesn't necessarily go where we want it to go. It kind of needs to be focused. Otherwise, it doesn't go that deep and it bounces off <coughs> into other chromophores in the skin and we don't get the effect that we want. And so the result is you get deep dermal heating. The heating induces cellular injury, which induces the healing process, which stimulates fibroblasts, and then from fibroblasts you get to production of new collagen. So it's 5% epidermal ablation, we can't change that depending on the setting. We can change how the, the intensities of the radio frequency, but we can't change the amount of epidermal ablation. So the one disadvantage with this one is that with only 5% epidermal ablation, you're not getting the clearing of pigment that you would say with the CO2 or the fractal. And with this, we get dispersed heat to the dermal layer so you get 30% dispersion, so it is like an inverted pyramid. It's minimal surface disruption and then more heat deeper down. We can use it on all skin types, minimal downtime, two to three days, uh, approximately three treatments are needed. So with regular CO2, you can see more epidermal damage, less heat down here. With this one, the, the concept is less epidermal damage and more heat deposited into the deeper layers where you're seeing most of the work take place as far as skin tightening. And here's the, um, and this is the best picture I could find, but that's the metal applicator tip that makes this system unique. I really think that the biggest confusion with these devices is when, when are we going to use this as opposed to the fractal? And um, I, I, I think it's just going to come down to um, pigmentation. If pigment is an issue for the patient, I don't think this is going to be the ideal system to use. Or they could use this and just combine it with an SRE first to address pigment. But this in itself is, is only minimally going to treat pigment. So I think fractal would be superior in situations like that. Also, I think this one is um, less painful. The fractal is quite painful, so if pain tolerance is an issue, this would be a better option over fractal. I think downtime is really the same, two, two days. 
um, with this one you kind of have a little grid-like look on your face with fractals, more kind of a diffuse redness, a little bit of swelling, but if you put it in the plan on about two, two days for both of them. This, this is just a picture of plain radio frequency, the ELIS technology that we have, this is our, like our reed firm. Um, you know, ELIS, you can combine the mic with the radio frequency to help the, if we preheat the skin first with the light, then use the radio frequency, the radio frequency will go deeper to where we want it to go because radio frequency will follow the heat. And otherwise, radio frequency, like I said, it's just kind of doesn't go as deep as we want, it'll just stay on the surface. So the addition of light adds, makes it more effective. So the Ulthera, the third modality we have, this is ultrasound. Um, again, unique from the new technology that we're using right now. Um, it is non-surgical and it's used to lift and tighten. And that's what's unique about the Ulthera is the only device that's FDA approved to actually lift the tissues. All the devices tighten, but this is the only one that actually has FDA approval for lifting. Although it's not surgical, it doesn't give the results of surgery, but it's, you know. It bypasses the skin surface totally. We have no epidermal destruction, and it targets the skin tissue where the collagen lives. And it does that by, with the ultrasound waves, they only um, coagulate when they cross. So you can target the depth to, to whatever, 4.5 or 3 millimeters, and they'll only hit at that depth, nothing above. And it works from the inside out. It delivers tiny deposits of focused ultrasound energy at the same level that a facelift typically addresses. Again, which is unique, all of our other lasers um, can't go this deep. Even the CO2, like I said, it goes 1.5 millimeters. This one can go 4.5 millimeters. So we have access to a lot deeper structures um, that we never had before. It stimulates the growth of new collagen. And like I said, again, we, can vary the, we have varying depths that we can utilize with it. So here's just a picture. Here's the epidermis and dermis. Here's subcutaneous fat. This is the underlying collagen bundle, and this is where we're depositing these. This is the muscular layer. This is where we're depositing these um, little ablation plates to really tighten up that underlying structure. So the, the trainer explained it in a good way. She says it's like doing a remodel on a house and that when you start, you want to really make sure you have a solid foundation and then build up, and that's what the Ulthera does. We're really we're starting deep and then working up. And so you really could combine this with any of our other technologies, fractional or fractal. Um, and I, in fact, I think most of all, our, our Ulthera patients would be benefits for that combination treatment because this doesn't necessarily do anything with pigment, um, but you could do the deeper layers with this and then go over and do the superficial layers with the CO2 capsule. So the beauty of this one, there's no downtime. Um, literally, they walk out of there and they do a little slightly change, but patients I've seen thus 